This man seems tired, but he is a well-trained assassin on a mission to kill his friend's killer. Will he succeed? Let's figure it out. Welcome back to Explanation Pro. Today we will recap an action movie called, Wildcard. Spoiler alert. Watch out and take care. In a restaurant in Las Vegas, Nick Wilde, a recovering gambling addict who takes odd jobs to support his addiction, is having a drink. Later, a girl named Doris arrives and orders a Diet Pepsi. They exchange smiles and stare at each other while she's buying her drinks. After that, she heads to an empty table and settles there. Later, her boyfriend, Osgood, arrives at the restaurant in his red Mustang. He joins her while she tells him they should leave the restaurant because she's not comfortable with Nick in that restaurant. However, he tells her that he has just arrived and assures her that it won't be a problem. Osgood starts discussing their future together and convincing her to marry him. However, she refuses to do so since she's already gotten married three times, and none of those were successful. At the same time, Nick introduces himself and asks Doris to come and dance with him. She tells him that she doesn't want to dance, and Osgood tells him they are talking. However, Nick grabs Doris' hand, insisting she dances with him, leading Osgood and Nick into a fight. Nick puts his hand in Osgood's hair and pulls off his wig. He then starts playing around with Osgood and his toupee. On the other hand, Doris holds Osgood's hand and drags him out of the restaurant so they can stop fighting. But he still tries to take the wig, saying it costs him a lot of money because it is customized. Doris gets mad and tells him to stop caring about the money and leave as she's starting to get scared, which eventually convinces him. When they get out, Doris is furious at Osgood, he tries to tell her that he tried to be very gentlemanly, but there's just a beast side to everybody. He then tells her that he believes she thinks less of him for walking out and that that's the truth. While they're arguing, Nick follows them outside and offers to hand him back his wig, but they both fight again, in which Osgood gives Nick a good beating. After that, Nick leaves and Doris runs to Osgood and kisses him. Before they go, Osgood bends to get his wig from the ground, but Doris says that she likes him without it. Later that night, someone drops a woman from a car on the road. Meanwhile, a nurse comes out for a cigarette in a hospital when he sees the woman dropped from the car. He immediately brings her into the emergency room, all wounded and bleeding. The emergency staff keeps asking her for the name and who did that to her, but she keeps repeating Nick before she gets unconscious. The following day, Nick wakes up in a motel bed, and then soon after, he drives his car to get to his work as a security consultant. When he arrives, his associate tells him about some letters that he has received. He tells his associate to read the mail to him because he is not into it. However, Nick pays little attention while his associate reads it and stands in the corner of the office. Later, a customer comes in. The customer introduces himself as Cyrus Kinnick and says he is looking for Nick. Nick's associate points at Nick, so Cyrus heads to him. Cyrus tells Nick that he heard about him from a previous client, also his neighbor, in Boston, and wants security while he goes to a casino. When Cyrus asks Nick to tell him about himself, Nick stands up and says he has been knocked down, blown up, lied to, and shot. He adds that nothing surprises him anymore except what people do to each other. He says he's also a licensed pilot, took karate in Tokyo, and lectured economics at Yale. He even boastfully says he can memorize the New York Times front page in five minutes. Also, he was the national Golden Gloves champion for three years in a row, but he ends his speech by saying that he lies a lot, causing Cyrus to laugh. After that, Cyrus tells him he's staying at Caesars and wants to meet at 7 p.m. Nick immediately agrees to do the job, and Cryus leaves after their agreement. After that, Nick drives his car to a restaurant. As he's about to enter, Osgood meets him outside and thanks him. Osgood tells him their plan worked and starts laughing at what they said and did to each other last night. Osgood pays him $500 for the job and offers another $500 as a bonus, but Nick doesn't accept it. Then, Osgood tells him that Doris is in love with him and agrees to marry him after he beat him last night. After talking with Osgood, he goes into the restaurant, where he gossips with his bartender friend Roxy. At the same time, they listen to a couple sitting at the table next to the counter. Roxy then goes to serve the customer. When she returns, she tells Nick that Holly, just called asking him to stop by her house. She also hands him a paper and tells him not to waste his grapefruit juice. Nick then goes to Holly's house, and as he enters, Holly offers him a freshly brewed coffee and keeps talking to him, hiding in a room. He tells her that if she's going to hide, they can talk on the phone, to which she replies that she doesn't think he wants to see her like that. When she comes out, she reveals her wounded face and hugs him. She tells him that the doctors told her she kept calling him at the emergency room, making them think he was responsible for her beating. Then she started telling what happened to her, saying that when she left her date last night, she got to the elevator. Inside, there were three people, two bodyguards and one who seemed to be their boss. She continues to say that the boss asked her to come to the party, 
but when she refused, he said he was too pretty for her to turn down. When they reached the floor of the boss's room, he pulled her, beat, and later threw her off in front of a hospital. She tells Nick that she called him because she thinks he's the only one who can help her. She hands him a hundred dollars, but he says it's his day to turn down money and asks why she's paying him. She answers that she wants to sue them, to which he says that she must hire a lawyer, and he's not a lawyer. When she says that she doesn't know anything about him or them, he tells her to hire a detective. Then he asks her the hotel's name, and she says it's the Golden Nugget. He tells her that he has already told her not to go to that place and that she should have known better. He then swears that he has no point of contact in that hotel and leaves. On his way, even if he doesn't want to, he still stops at the Golden Nugget Hotel. He goes down to its laundry room and explains the physical attributes of the man who abused Holly to one of the staff members named Millicent. She tells him they will meet at a burger joint after her shift if she finds anything about the guy. Nick finds Millicent eating her burger when he goes to the burger joint. She describes Danny DeMarco, a gangster, and his bodyguards. However, she warns him not to go after them if he wants to live. Despite knowing all the details, he calls Holly and lies to her that he can't find anything. She then cuts the call saying that he's a liar. That night, Nick meets Cyrus and shows him around Vegas City. After some sightseeing around the city, they go to a casino, where Nick leaves Cyrus, saying he'll be safe while they are there. In the meantime, Nick returns to Holly's place, where he tells her the name of her abuser and all the information she needs to sue him. As he's about to leave, she tells him to wait, saying that she must write down the details. Nick remains. Unfortunately, he starts getting bitter with her. She realizes his attitude and asks why he's so angry. He confronts her and says that she's a liar too and that she never wanted to sue him, to which she agrees. She says she wants him to get to them and soften them up so she can hurt Danny the way he hurt her. He then leaves without saying anything and goes to the Golden Nugget Hotel. When he reaches the hotel, he wears a Santa Claus red hat and knocks on Danny's door. There, he introduces himself as someone sent by Baby to bring a girl for Danny. The guard who came to the door doesn't let him in, but the second one brings him into Danny's private chamber upon hearing the name of Baby. Danny asks Nick where the girl is and if she's beautiful, to which Nick replies that she was beautiful before someone disrespected her last night. Danny immediately gets out of his bathtub, offers Nick $50,000, and says he should leave or they will shoot him. Nick turns around as if he's going, but instead, he smashes Danny's bodyguards. Danny tries to shoot him, but he gets to dodge the bullets. In no time, he gets done with them and ties up the bodyguards to each other while he makes Danny sit on a chair. Then, Holly enters the room and starts torturing Danny in the same way he tortured her. She puts a cutter on and commands him to say he loves her. She also tells him she'll let him go if she feels he's sincere. It keeps going for a while, but she spares it in the end. After that, Holly leaves the suite and takes away their share of $50,000. From then on, Nick returns to the casino where he left Cyrus. Before he meets him, he plays blackjack with his dealer friend Cassandra. Then, he leaves the game unfinished just to come back later. When he sits back at the table, he goes on a huge winning streak with the next dealer, accumulating over half a million dollars. Later, Nick and Cyrus have their drinks, and Nick is about to get the cash in exchange for poker chips. However, he changes his mind and returns to the playing table. He says that even though the money will last him many years, it won't be enough for his lifetime. Unfortunately, he loses all his winnings, including his original $25,000 on a single blackjack bet with Cassandra. When he stands up off the table, the people around him are clapping but seem sad for him. In frustration and rage, he panics and blacks out. Cyrus then gets him into a room where he reveals himself as a self-made millionaire. He tells him that he wants him to mentor him on being brave. For that, he's ready to pay any amount that Nick wants. However, Nick rejects the offer and goes to the bar in the casino below. When he has his drink there, the men of Danny barge in him, and in his fury at losing, he gives each of them a good beating. When he finishes with them, the guards of Baby reach the casino and ask Nick to come along, to which he agrees. They then take him to a place where Danny is already present. Danny claims that Nick broke into his hotel room, pistol whipped him, killed two of his men, and took away $50,000. On the other hand, Baby, the mafia boss of Las Vegas, asks Nick what he has to say about the allegations. Before Nick speaks, Baby warns him that if he fails to prove himself, he'll get killed for the murder of two men, but Nick says that Danny is lying. He tells him that Danny killed his men to save face after begging for his life and that Danny bears a cut on his p After hearing that, Baby asks Danny to drop his pants to prove Nick wrong, but Danny then leaves in embarrassment and tells Nick he'll come after him. The following day, Nick has his grapefruit juice at the same bar from the office where Cyrus is already present. He then offers Nick half a million and a ticket to Corsica. Meanwhile, they're busy in their casual talks when Nick mentions that he's going to get murdered, and right then, Danny and his thugs barge into the restaurant. 
Cyrus creates a distraction by standing at the table and shouting, which allows Nick to run from there. He hides on the roof but jumps down and kills Danny and his men using a knife from the restaurant. Then, he returns to his car, where Cyrus comes and offers him half a million and a ticket once again. At first, Nick refuses again but eventually accepts it. After that, he leaves after shaking hands with Cyrus and goes to his motel to pack all his stuff and leave Vegas. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.